get out one viv here, fourth time trying to film this introduction, so we're going to keep it short and simple. Otherwise, I end up not being able to talk, or the phone rings, or something else happens. Right, <laughs> time to spin up some moulds. I've been spinning some moulds for the last uh, week or so. Um, nothing I can use at them or sell at the moment. They're just copies, basically, of existing figures uh, that I've been moulding for uh, learning, basically. Learning how to make moulds, learning how to spin them, learning how to dial the pressures in on the spin caster, the speed and all that sort of stuff the temperature of the metal, how to pour uh, the label so you get a nice smooth uh, pour. Um, and I thought I'd switch the camera on and just show you guys while I spin up a couple of moulds. Uh, and I'll tell you about those uh, in just a second. So <laughs> let's go check it out. Okay, so over here in the corner, a bit different than the picture, is the furnace. It only has a small amount of metal in here at the moment. It looks kind of messy, but uh, we'll have a look at that. Uh, it's just got two of these ingots in it, and each of these ingots probably weighs <coughs> maybe five kilos. Um, it's sitting at 318 degrees, that's a little hot, it should have switched off by now, it does sound like it's off. It should be at 287. Um, so it overheats a little bit, then the gas switches off, and then it cools down and then switches back on and uh, overshoots that temperature a little bit, it's not 100% perfect. Um, now if we have a look in here, this uh, white metal kind of looks a little bit gunky, but if we clear this top surface away, that slag on the top, it's actually really clean so I need to clean off that slag uh, it needs to be done periodically it's just a matter of scooping off this top layer of, uh, of gunky crap but I'll do that later on so we'll just tip that back in there so then the spin caster um, this has several settings on it how long the mold spins for anywhere up to three minutes the RPM how many times it spins around it goes from uh, zero all the way around to 10,000 revolutions per minute and it's got the pressure and the pressure dictates these this plate in here that bottom plate that the mold sits on lifts up and this locking plate locks in place and the pressure in between the mold uh, is relevant in terms of uh, all these little gates and uh, the vents and stuff and if the pressure is too much the vents get squashed and your figures your figures get uh, sort of uh, mm, 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 what's the word squished not correctly so uh, I'm gonna spin this mold a couple of times and we'll have a look at the figures that come out okay so basically the process starts with our two mold halves we just need to dust it with this uh, fine uh, uh, talcum powder kind of material line up our two mold halves which we can uh, See that little V and when we line it up it will lock into place, then this needs to go on the spin caster. So then this goes into the bottom of the caster, make sure everything's still lined up. There's little locking nugs in the bottom here to make sure it's in the middle. The plate goes on and it just twists it into shape. So this is set, as I might have mentioned before, to spin for half a minute at 600 revolutions per minute under 20 pounds of pressure. As soon as I close the lid here, this will lift up and as soon as it's closed all the way, it'll start spinning. So we'll grab some metal over here from uh, the furnace. We'll close this. That lifts up. Pour in a little bit of metal. This will spin for 30 seconds and then stop. It'll drop back down and take off the locking plate. Then the mould can come out and onto the workbench for demoulding. So here's the mould. This is a little bit cold, so I wouldn't be surprised if everything doesn't come out. There we go. We can see that the mould's not complete. Because it is cold, it'll take a couple of spins for the mould to come up to temperature. And then it's just a matter of popping these out. We'll clear this all off. All of this will go back into the furnace and melt down, and uh, we'll retap this and pop it back in the mold again. So this time, hopefully, we've got a full mold. There is one small little problem down the corner here. I don't know if you can see it. This figure here is missing a part of its base. So I'll cut another vent in there, and that should help with that one. But otherwise.
We've got a whole bunch of this little man's still very hot. Little figures. So as I mentioned, none of this stuff I can actually commercially use. Uh, this, those figures have just been molded for uh, practice purposes. But uh, I'm just chatting at the moment with uh, sculptors in Germany, in the US and here in Australia about acquiring uh, figures, greens, which we can make masters of in production mold. Uh, looking at acquiring a couple of ranges, so hopefully over the next couple of uh, months uh, some things come together and uh, Knights of Dice will uh, start to eventually be able to launch its own range of miniatures, possibly with a game further down the track, but shh, we'll talk about that later on. Thanks for tuning in guys, I'll catch you next time, see ya.